this one's going to be super advanced, this number. So try and stay with me. For the Jazz, the Utah Jazz finishes off with this podcast. 23. That is Royce O'Neal's jersey number. They hey, remain, back-to-back jersey numbers. <laughs> they remain so reliant on him defensively going up against the opposition's best player that at this point it's almost criminal that that's how reliant they are on him. So he guards the number one option on the other team, according to the usage rate, 32.3% of the time. The next player on the Jazz that ranks second in this metric is Joe Ingles at 204 Makes sense, him coming off the bench, whatever. That gap, though, nearly a 12 percentage point gap is the third largest in the NBA from the player on a team that spends the most time guarding the number one option to the second to the person that spends the second most time. The only players in front of him, can you guess either one of him? Absolutely not. I think you could guess one of them I gave you. Lou Dort in OKC. I don't think that surprised you. This one got me. But then you think about the roster and you're like, okay, Gary Harris in Orlando. Hmm. I think I, I would be surprised by that one just because it feels like Orlando has so many young pieces that it would be experimenting and trying to figure out who has the defensive chops. But it's also like, who? Aside from Garrett, like, it's not... It's, yeah, yeah exactly. I don't have an answer. So they, they might actually be the most logical pick because they spread out after him at solo. But mm-hmm. the other thing that I found interesting is so when you look at his average guarded usage rate, it's like 22-something for Royce O'Neal. The gap between him and second place is basically three percentage points which seems small that's actually the largest gap between one and two in the nba and a single team so this is just like when he's not guarding the number one option it's probably because he's on number two or you're never going to basically see him like he never has the opportunity to, to catch a beat is what i'm getting at because whether it's wings guards you're talking point of attack you're talking some movement shooters he's had to cover like the whole positional archetypal spectrum here and kudos to him. I don't know that he's as good defensively this season as he was last year, but just the, the scope of his role, like I said, is criminal. And that's why I think that the Jazz really need to swing for the fences on a trade here this season. If it costs you Joe Ingles, who's been, I don't want to say low-key awful this season, but he's not been, he had a nice stretch, but he just has not been great for them before going in health and safety protocols. But I would be looking to trade Ingles or Clarkson. I'm not trading Boyan Bogdanovich. He's just... I saw some stuff floating around about that. Is he expendable to the offense? Maybe because Utah's offense is fucking thermonuclear, but you have a six foot seven inch wing who's averaging over 17 points per game on better than 60 true shooting. Like, let's keep I that wouldn't guy. get rid of that. Let's, Absolutely. let's keep that guy. <laughs> would you say that Royce O'Neal is the best player who's ever worn number 23 in the NBA? Yeah, he has to be, right? No, nobody else. I think else so. I think so. My, my follow up number for Utah is zero. And that is the number of people, despite Utah's history in the last few years of flaming out in the playoffs zero is the number of people who should be believing that this team can't win a championship i will say left alone they can win a title but they are the team where it feels like they need a move if they want to when you look at the five teams to be that are most likely to win the title milwaukee brooklyn golden state phoenix utah they are the team of that bunch i think needs a move the most and i don't think i would agree with that I don't think it needs to be a large scale move. I've seen people. Ponder no, it's a periphery depth piece that can just provide a little bit more defensive juice so that O'Neill doesn't have to do this. And I would say you probably might even need to. I think the issue with them is that if you're, they're so deep that if you're, let's say you're able to trade for Tory Craig, which you could, and he makes sense. He's probably not consistently cracking the top nine of your playoff rotation. So with, what they need to do is find a player that would, do that. And Josh Richardson has been the name that I've come back to for them. I think he, they're a, to me, they're a Josh Richardson away from maybe being the title favorite is basically, I wouldn't put them. I don't know if I'd put them over Phoenix or Golden State or Milwaukee necessarily. If they traded for Josh Richardson right here, right now, I'd pick them over Brooklyn. I'd probably pick them over Brooklyn right now. So maybe that's not that spicy, but they're that type of a player away from really just entering the, does this team deserve to be not a title contender, but the title favorite discussion. And right now I think that's really reserved for, those top four teams. And I'm not, I, I kind of have Brooklyn out of there, to be honest with you, where I look at Milwaukee, right there with you. Yeah. Phoenix and Golden State. I think Utah has the chance with a Josh Richardson size move to enter that, that discourse. I might end up having them be my absolute favorite, even if they don't make a Josh Richardson size move. And I've, I've picked them in the playoffs each of the last few years, just because 
I do ultimately believe in what this organization has been doing, especially as Donovan Mitchell has more time in that featured role in high stakes situations. There have just been some unlucky factors. Like there, are, there have been key injuries to them in the playoffs each of the last few years. They did run into a bad matchup three years ago that Rudy Gobert wasn't as effective against. And unfortunately that's still being held against him to this day, even if it shouldn't be like this, this offense this season, as you put it, just thermonuclear. And that still might be selling it short because it's been so explosive and so consistently explosive. And by the way, if you're looking to simplify the Royce O'Neal defensive workload, he is among every player that's logged at least 500 minutes this year. He's ninth in matchup difficulty in the league. Pretty so decent. that's, that's super high. Can you guess who's first? I'm going to go with Dort again. He is in front of him, but he is also third. Hit me with it. Matisse Seibel is first. Fair enough. I think it's easier to get there when he's played 722 minutes and you're looking at Royce O'Neal, who is at, as we record this, almost over 1,100. So, but yeah, Royce O'Neal, the Jazz need you, but they, they also need to give you some help. <laughs> That's 23 in league history.